Kill me, I'm here! Kill me! Hey everybody, this is Matthew Movies coming at you, and I've been tagged. My buddy Franklin F. M. McInnes tagged me in the My Life Is uh, My Life in Movies series, and basically this is a, a series of questions that you ask that are meant to reveal your feelings on movies and like nostalgia and all that kind of good stuff. Now, before I actually get to the que series of questions, I want to talk about Franklin for a moment. He is a super, super great dude. I have just the utmost respect for him, and. I love his content. In the description below, there is a link where you can go and find his channel. And you can go and subscribe, and he definitely deserves your attention because he is just such a solid guy. Has really good content. Talks about collecting for the most part. Him and I have collaborated on a series uh, looking at various movies and actors and that kind of thing. And just an all-around good dude who deserves more attention. And in this case, I'm not actually linking specifically to his channel. I'm linking to a specific video because he currently has a Disney giveaway going on called FM's Die Hard Disney Fan Giveaway. And basically, if you go and you make a video about what Disney means to you, you can be entered to have a box sent to you of awesome, awesome Disney stuff. And I know that there are plenty of Disney fans out there, so you ne definitely need to check this out. Just awesome, awesome dude. Now, to the questions. There's 14 of them, I believe, which is quite a bit. So I want to try to I'm going to try to go through them pretty quickly here. But I, I have I have a list that I'm going to be looking at because I'm not I wasn't going to be memorizing 14 questions and answers. So, anyways, the first one up is for, is called First Steps, the first film you remember seeing as a kid. And for me, that's a movie called Follow That Bird. It's a Sesame Street movie that focuses on Big Bird as he's trying to to find his family because he realizes that he's uh, obviously not born on Sesame Street and he kind of goes out and discovers the world and I just remember watching it over and over again as a kid. One of my first movies that I, I really, really, really cared about and just the first movie I remember watching as a kid. The second question is Teenage Crush. Which actor slash actress did you have a crush on? For me, the first one that came to mind is Jamie Gertz. Now, if you don't know who that is and you've seen the movie Lost Boys, it is the female lead from that movie. She was a big star in the 80s, had big black hair, like the, it was very curly, big, like the era. And I, I just thought she was just a, a gorgeous gal. And I, I definitely, definitely had a crush on her as a, as a, as a youngster growing up. Uh, and then the next question is, bad choices, good outcome. A movie you watched and ended up enjoying even though you wanted to hate it. Now first off, I've never gone into a movie watching it wanting to hate it. I don't really know why you'd watch a movie if you wanted to hate it. Uh, but there was a movie that I, I did watch that I had heard kind of things about and I thought the concept sounded interesting but at the time I thought the person who was the lead actor in it was atrocious. So even though I was interested in the concept, I figured that I was going to hate it, and the opposite was true. And that's a movie called Shattered Glass. For those of you who don't know what that movie is about, essentially it, it stars uh, it stars Hayden Christensen, the aforementioned actor who I thought was terrible based on the Star Wars prequels, and he plays a real-life person by the name of Stephen Glass who was a journalist who faked elements of his stories, and I thought that, that sounded really interesting, and I went into it, though, with my kind of backup, thinking, ooh, he's such a terrible actor, and I thought he did a phenomenal job in this movie. The, the, video, the movie has an awesome ensemble class uh, cast, I should say. Uh, if you check out my uh, playlist of my all-time favorite movies, it's in there. That's how much I liked it. Then the next question, number four, is first date. When you went on a first date, what movie did you see? I, I've gone on first dates with several women in the past. Not you know, obviously I'm not a ton, but a, more than one. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but I'm choosing to to focus on the movie that I saw when I went on my first date with the woman who became my wife, and we saw Across the Universe, the musical that was based around the Beatles music. It had just come out at the time, and we were talking about movies quite a bit when we first met. We met on a dating site, and that that was a movie that came up that we both really wanted to see and I thought looked really interesting. I'm a big fan of the Beatles music, so we went and checked it out and had a really good time and then she bought it for me um, early on in our relationship and we've watched it several times since then. Next question, Home Comforts. What movie reminds you of time with your family? This one, I think I'm going to have some pretty unusual answers to. Die Hard, Predator, and The Fugitive were the three that immediately came to mind because when I was growing up, I have two brothers and obviously a father 
who we dominated the type of things we watched. So we watched a lot of action movies growing up. So those movies are the ones that I think of. Like I remember watching all three of those movies over and over again with my dad. I remember like laying with my head on his legs and stuff like that, and just uh, just perfect, innocent, awesome badass times if that makes sense question number six first heartbreak what movie really upset or hit you more than you thought the first movie that i remember actually crying at when i was a kid was the movie backdraft i think this movie is wildly underrated for those of you who don't know it a lot of people think about it a lot because there's a universal uh, studios ride but basically it's a movie about firefighters and there's arsons going on and there's these really huge set pieces that are like buildings that are on fire and it's very action-packed but at its core it's about two brothers and they're in their 30s late 40s area played by uh, Stephen Baldwin not Stephen Baldwin but sorry Billy Baldwin and Kurt Russell and they have a very argumentative relationship and they both live their lives in the shadow of their father who died when they were young and there's a moment that comes late in the film where even though they've had such a real a rival relationship throughout the rest of the film they they bond again and they, there's a sacrifice there that I remember making me cry as a kid and it just it just got to me and it still gets to me now if I watch it so that's the first movie I remember really crying at as a, as a youngster uh, leaving home what movie was the first you watched without your family I remember the night that I moved out of my parents house for the first time after I packed everything up I watched the movie United 93 which may be a, a interesting choice but for those of you who don't know this movie the one the movie is it's about the the, one of the three or four planes that uh, crashed on September 11th, 2001, but this is the one that actually went down in the middle of the field, killing everybody involved on the plane, but not hitting its target. And it's it's such a emotional film and really spellbinding and makes you really empathize with what they're going through and really respect the people on board that flight and what they did to save the lives of untold amounts of people. Uh, next question is good times. What movie do you watch most and why? The movie that I've watched by far the most in my life is Predator. I have seen that movie literally hundreds of times. I Every time I watch it, I just have an absolute ball. It is just, I mean, I, I just love it through and through. Uh, and I can quote lines from it. I know exactly what's going to happen next. And every time it happens, I still love it completely. It's just a movie that I will always, always dig. Question nine, uh, learn a new language. What is your favorite non-English language movie? For me, I would say Seven Samurai. I watched this movie actually not that long ago, last year for the first time, and I just thought it, it was amazing. It is a ex very long movie at three and a half-ish hours long, but the characters are so well built. The situation is one that you can really put yourself in. The stakes are so perfectly set up. I mean, across the board, the storytelling in this movie is just, I mean, beyond reproach. Reproach, I should say. Uh, can't leave the sofa. What series on TV got you hooked? So, when I thought about this question, my first answer was Lost, but after uh, the first couple seasons, it kind of lost me. <laughs> uh, so, I, I decided to, to look at two movies, or two shows, I should say. One a comedy, one a drama that had me just completely invested from beginning to end and made me completely want to see the next episode. The, the second, the first one, the, the one I was watching came to an end. On the comedy side, it's Freaks and Geeks. I think it's just such an amazing show. I, I remember watching it for the first time and, and not necessarily seeing what all the hubbub was about in the first couple episodes, but then in the third episode, I believe it is, or the fourth, when it uh, is Halloween and the, the group goes out, it just completely got me invested in all of the characters and from that point on I just absolutely loved it and then on the dramatic side is Breaking Bad I mean that's just that show is just amazing uh, next up is Sick Day what movie do you watch if you don't feel well to cheer you up people may be the next question is Sick Day what movie do you watch if you don't feel well or cheer to cheer you up uh, people may be surprised by the movie I'm going to mention because a lot of people really don't like it but for me there's something about George of the Jungle, the Brendan Fraser movie that just puts a smile on my face. It's so just ridiculous and over the top and silly that it just, I, I don't know, I, I, I just let it wash over me and it makes me, it feels very, like a very childish film and takes me back to watching the cartoons as a youngster and I just, I just, there's something about it that I dig and makes me feel a little bit happier when I'm not feeling the best. 
Next up, looking to the future, what movies are you looking forward to seeing? There's four movies that I've got listed here that I just, I, I mean, I just cannot wait to see. Uh, Star Wars The Last Jedi, for obvious reasons. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, again, pretty obvious. Spider-Man Homecoming, I just love Spider-Man movies, and I love Marvel movies. If you check out my channel more than once, you've probably picked up on that by this point. And Dunkirk, the, the latest Christopher Nolan movie, I just can't wait for that one either. Super, super excited for all four of those films. If only, what old movie do you want to see remade? There is a movie that came out that I think is very underseen and not, not a lot of people know about that I think one is really, really cool and people should watch it like currently just awesome movie, but also I think has, has so much material for a potential remake that I would love to see it. And that's a movie called Miracle Mile. What this movie is about there is you get introduced to this character and he's in a diner and all of a sudden he gets a phone call and he finds out that the world is about to end that there's going to be nukes dropped and he spends the rest of the night trying to go around dealing with that dealing with all the people as the word starts getting out and other people start being coming frantic making like a relationship with a girl that he likes trying to get to the ones he loves i just think it's such an interesting story it's an awesome film and could be remade today with if given the proper actors and directors like any movie needs would be awesome end of the road what three films do you think you will always enjoy watching uh, I'm not saying Predator here just because I think I've made it abundantly clear how I feel about that movie at this point, but I'm going to list Eternal Sunshine of the Spot is mine, my all-time favorite movie. I can watch that movie over and over again and pick out new things every time I watch it, and just, it just it's so dense and amazing and fantastic. The Prestige, the Christopher Nolan movie, one of my all-time favorite movies as well. I just absolutely dig it. it Every time I watch it, I just get so wrapped up in all the ups and downs and all the turns and twists and the characters and everything about it. And then Back to the Future is just such a classic that I will, I don't know how anybody could not love that movie. Only thing left to do is to tag some people. So I'm going to be tagging three channels that I don't think I've tagged before in any of my other videos to kind of break things up a little bit. I'm tagging Anna M, who is a really cool YouTuber who does a lot of unboxings and just a real sweetheart of a lady. Uh, Moonlander, a channel that I've come across fairly recently that he talks a lot about movies and does unboxings as well. He's just a really good dude. And then No Star Reviews. I mean, describing his channel is pretty pretty interesting because he his, his content just runs the gamut just an awesome awesome dude very funny has, has taste tests has unboxings you name it he's done it just awesome dude so that's it for me that on the my life with movies tag i'd like to thank franklin fm mckinnis for thinking of me and including me in this this the group that he tagged and other than that have yourself a good day Ding.